Hello and welcome to our section on vitamins. We're going to be covering water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins this week. Before we get started, I want to point out that nutritional deficiencies or vitamin deficiencies, uh, that we don't see that often in the United States. They're mostly found in developing countries. But even if you are not deficient in a vitamin, don't develop the disease associated with deficiency, having low level levels of vitamins can impact your health. So let's go ahead and get started. And first we'll just introduce the different categories of vitamins. Um, now remember micronutrients are both vitamins and minerals and our vitamins come in both a water soluble and fat soluble group. Water soluble vitamins are vitamins C and B, whereas the fat soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. Now, what I like to do is have you take a look at this picture, and this is from the BP oil spill. And it's taken from NASA, but you can see how oil is different from the water. You can see there's a separation of the two. Because oil does not dissolve in water, they're always going to be separate. Uh, and this really impacts how vitamins are absorbed and then their bioavailability or how they function in the body, how they're transported, how they're stored in the body. So think about this picture or you can think about a dressing where you know that the uh, water part is very separate from the oily part. Uh, they're always going to be separate. Now, of course, we learned about lipids that act as uh, emulsifiers such as lecithin that can help bind and bring those into solution. Um, but let's start with our water-soluble vitamins. Um, vitamin C and all the B vitamins are water-soluble. So this means that they're going to dissolve in water. So that means they're easily absorbed and transported. Now why is that? It's because the digestive juices are water-based and so is the bloodstream. So it's very easy easy for them to be both digested and excuse me absorbed and then transported throughout the body but because they're water soluble they're not going to be stored in any significant quantities so you're not going to see them uh, build up as much as the fat soluble vitamins and they're and this also means that they're rarely toxic if they're not developing or building up then they're not going to be stored therefore they're not going to be toxic now the fat soluble vitamins that's a d e and k these are not are not going to dissolve in water. They need fat to be absorbed. So if you're consuming these vitamins, but you are not consuming any fat with them, the absorption is going to be much lower than it would be if you were consuming them with fat. Uh, and this comes mostly when you think about fortification of foods. So they need fat to be absorbed. They also are stored extensively. Now because of that, because they have the capacity to be stored, we don't need them on a daily basis like we do the water-soluble vitamins. In fact, you know, like vitamin D, you can get enough through the, the summer months, um, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, but then that will help carry you through the winter months in some cases. And that's true for a lot of these different um, fat-soluble vitamins. It's not a daily need because they are stored and can be utilized. The water soluble, on the other hand, they're not being stored. So you need a more consistent dose of these vitamins. Um, but with the fat soluble, and I know I'm jumping back and forth here, but with the fat soluble, they can reach toxic levels because they can be stored. And we'll go over this. This is mostly from fortification and supplements, rarely from food. Okay, so we'll, um, I'm going to mention the start with the fat soluble vitamins. And then what we're going to do is talk about vitamin A 